We live in an invisible digital system. Our days in them begin the moment our phone's alarm rings. Right? For a lot of us, I'm sure, this morning, the first thing you see is not the sunrise. It's a screen. Right? News, notifications, emails, perfectly curated just for you. Every tap, every swipe, feel like your choice, but it's a guided one. Sorry. Hello, everyone. My name is Ming Nguyen, and as a solution architect, I build these digital systems. And I've learned that in this day and age, every engineering choice is a cultural one. I first learned this when my team uh, at a read receipt uh, features into a workplace chat application. Now, show of hands, any of you here is using Zalo, Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Telegram? All of you, right? So you, you should be very familiar with this double check icon uh, that show the other on the other side, uh, the, the person on the other side, that you have uh, read the message. Now, when we add these features, we thought it was very informative, right? But people were rushing to turn it off. Why? Because now that your boss knows, you've seen their message. You suddenly feel the pressure to reply instantly. Such a very small and simple features were creating workplace anxiety. Yeah? And that's when it hit me. Nothing we build is truly neutral. We encode habits and values and behaviors into our applications, whether we're aware of it or not. And this can scale up dramatically. Think of the short-form videos or short-form content revolutions, right? Sure, TikTok is the first one to uh, like popularize it, but with its success now, every other platform follows. So you got kind of a self-feeding circle with more video, more platform, more creator, more viewers, and more videos. Now, um, now, it's basically everywhere in the internet. You cannot avoid it as long as you are online. Now, these platforms are engineered to reward speed and emotion intensity. Now, that's how they keep your attention. The little dopamine hits every time you find a good one, is very, very addicting. And the recommendation engine is strikingly effective uh, in balancing between what it knows you will like versus what it wants you to explore more, just to keep you scrolling a little longer. Now, don't get me wrong, there's nothing cynical about that. It's just algorithm optimization. But such a large-scale adoption resolve not just a change in what we watch, but also how we think, how long we can focus, and how quickly we demand gratification. And this, this worries me. As a mother of a four years old, I can't help but wonder, in the world that she's growing into, what will her sense of patience be? How can she find joys in anything that is slow or quiet or difficult? How can she even contemplate deep thoughts when her whole world is designed for instant reaction? You see, this is not just about a couple of viral applications. This is about a whole generation being rewired by a design they never chose. And now we are at the verge of the next great shift. Of course, I'm talking about generative AI, right? Uh, don't get me wrong, this technology is a monumental leap. Its potential is enormous. The promise is to make everything faster, smarter, and more efficient. But as someone who now looks at the unintended consequences of design, I must ask, what is the hidden cost 
of all of this frictionless acceleration. I'll give you one. So the other day, I was writing an email to uh, one of my colleagues about a friendly disagreement, and I was like this. Um, hey, I gave a thought about uh, the idea you told me, and I think it might not work in our case. Dot dot dot. Uh, can can we uh, talk in person to um, go through what I have in mind? Then I add a emoji face, uh, thinking face to the end. Now, if you know me, you will know that this message comes from me. It got all of my like. Informal personal touches, and then of course my AI assistant pop up and uh, suggest to make it better, like this. I don't know if you you can read from back there, but it's um, after reviewing your idea, I have concerns about its feasibility. Let's schedule a time to brainstorm an alternative approach. Now you can see these two basically deliver the same message. The AI versions is.、Um, Grammatically perfect, it's clear, it's professional, and it's completely empty. Right? It's not me. It erased my hesitation, my conversational style, my collaborative questions. It took my humanity and optimized it away. And this leads to the danger, one of the dangers that I see creeping in, that we're developing two voices: our real, messy human voice that we ironically use with our AI. Like, if you're a frequent AI chatbot user, I'm sure you have no problem just pour your raw, unchecked thoughts, your half-baked. Silly ideas into it, right? But on the other side, we got the filtered, polished, almost machine tone that we use with each other, with our fellow humans, at least digitally. So in that space, we lost the subtle cue, the personality, the empathy that is delivered not through. Perfect word choice or perfect grammar, but through our very own imperfection. So there, we're stop connecting. We're just transmitting information. So hopefully, you've seen the pattern from a read receipt to a content platform to an AI that writes your emails. What we designed and built will end up designing us back. So the question I ask right now in my day-to-day -day work is not just can we build something, but should we? What kind of mind? What kind of habit? What ways of thinking are we cultivating with our codes? So,、uh, because I I do believe that the future is not something that we passively inherit. Or somewhere that we just simply arise at, is a place that we are designing and building right now with every single of our choices. So this is first a call out to all of the creators, the builders, the architects right out there, right, to be more mindful about our broader usage, that we must design not. Just for the functionality, but for who our products shape their users into. But look, this is not just a challenge for architects like me. I think you all have a choice. You all have a voice. You all have agency in this. So, what can you do? I suggest to start with three things. First is to notice the nudge. The next time your phone is asked to download an app or asks you to do something, just pause. Ask why. Who does this really serve? Second, question the default. I would say the default setting is the single most 
powerful force in technology, but it's usually set for the shake of the system. So today, when you go home, go to one of your favorite app settings, change something, make an active choice, see what happens. And lastly, protect your authenticity. The next time autocorrect suggests to change your message, or AI offers to polish your image, again, pause. Ask yourself this: What piece of me? Is this trying to smooth away? Choose your own voice. Choose your own imperfect human way of being. It's more valuable than you think. Technology and products are what we build, but our legacy is defined by what we protect. So let us all protect our nuance, our genuine connections. Our humanity. Thank you.